Welcome to the Collecting the King show. This is episode 38, and we're calling this one Return to Sender. On this show, I'll be talking about the controversies involving Elvis Presley autographs. I'm calling it Return to Sender because there are so many Elvis autographs sold almost every day, it seems, on eBay and other places, and then sent to buyers who think they got the real thing, but sometimes end up returning them because of doubts about their authenticity. Let's talk about some of the facts involving uh, autographs. First thing I want to say and make that absolutely clear, I am not an expert on signatures and autographs, okay? More on that later. But let's talk about some of the other facts. Elvis signed a lot of autographs in his lifetime. I don't know how many times you've seen books and pictures on the internet or wherever of a young Elvis Presley in the 50s signing his signature and autographs for fans. And there were a lot of fans and, at his concerts, and there were a lot of appearances and a lot of autographs signed. In the 60s, the same thing. It seemed like Elvis, when he would go on location, like you may have seen pictures from when he was filming It Happened at the World's Fair, signing autographs on the set when he was shooting clam bake. He signed a lot of stuff then. In the 70s, that trend continued because when he went on tour or when he was in Las Vegas, he would sign hundreds and hundreds of autographs. He would sign dollar bills, menus, or tour books. I think the signatures when he was in concert were mo mostly from Las Vegas because it was easier to get the signatures from him in Vegas. But anyway, getting back to the main point, he signed thousands and thousands and thousands in his lifetime. And that makes everything a little more complicated when it comes to figuring out which one's real, which one's not. It's everywhere. Think of all of the times that you've gone to Graceland or you've looked at Elvis bonus photos or even uh, the cover of the box set, the silver box set, which says Elvis Aaron Presley. Elvis Presley Enterprises turned his signature into a trademark. The signature is, is well known to everybody. Everybody's seen it. It's, in, it's extremely common. There are many people who claim to be able to authenticate Elvis's signature. And that's a fact. Many, many, many people. And if you've been doing this for a long time or you've been collecting or an Elvis fan or whatever, I'm sure you've run across many different people seeing an autograph going, well, that's not real. That one's real. Eh, I don't like the way he looped. I don't like the way the E looks. I don't like this and that. So, you know, there's a lot of people who, who claim to be authenticators, probably just because they've been fans for a long time. But there's a lot of them out there. The truth of the matter is, unless there is visual proof such as a picture or video of Elvis actually signing his name on something, it all becomes a matter of belief or trust. The greatest way to authenticate something is actually to see Elvis signing it. I've had autographs signed by different people over the years. As a matter of fact, I recently went to a uh, convention last August. I went and saw the cast of Back to the Future. So I went there and I was very fortunate because I got Michael J. Fox, I got Christopher Lloyd, uh, Leah Thompson, Tom Wilson. And I had him sign the Back to the Future movie poster. My wife, Carol, was able to take pictures of me standing in front of them as they signed the movie poster. That was something I was hoping they'd let me do because, you know, it helps authenticate the signature. If you could actually see a picture of Christopher Lloyd signing the poster, that's great, but it's even better if I'm standing in the picture with him. So if, if there's a picture of Elvis signing something, it's great because the person who owned it that he gave it to can say, well, look, here's a picture of me and Elvis signing it. And hopefully the picture looks clear enough and you can see the signature. But that's pretty much the best way to do it. It just, you got to have either a video or a picture of him signing the autograph. That's the most perfect way of authenticating everything. But if you don't have that, then really the only thing you've got is the word of a person who says that they had it signed. And that's, you know, then it becomes a matter of trust or a matter of belief. First of all, you've got to believe that person. And second of all, you have to trust that person because you have to trust the fact that they're not lying and what they've, what they've got is the real McCoy before you spend a dime on it. So as I said, I've been doing this a long time. And those of you who watch the show know that you know, I've been doing it 
uh, since the mid uh, 80s and I've been doing shows and everything and and throughout the years I've been very lucky because I've met a, a lot of the people who knew Elvis. I know you those of you who watch my show have seen me with Sonny West, pictures of me with Ed, Joe Esposito, with many many different people including Al Devorn and and Ed Bonja and the list goes on and on. And I always learned some real interesting things from these people. But as a collector, as a dealer and a collector, um, I have seen many, many, many autographs. I mean, I can't even begin to come up with a number. I actually thought before the show, I wonder if I could actually think how many times has somebody brought me an Elvis Presley autograph and said, this is real. And then I looked at it and went, mm, I don't know. And I can't tell you, I really don't remember how many times that's happened, but it's happened a lot. So what I want to do is I want to give you kind of a list of the, the autographs that I did have at one time uh, I, that uh, I don't have anymore, but I ended up selling at one point. And I'm going to show you some pictures of these things, too. So first of all, I think one of the very first autographs I ever got was from a woman in Texas who had heard about me through Presleyana or some other source and contacted me uh, through the mail and said, I have a picture of Elvis and it's signed, uh, but it's signed on the back, you know, and I got it uh, when he was in Texas back in the 50s, early 50s. The picture I'm going to show you, however, is not the picture that I had. However, the last time I was in Memphis, uh, a guy came up to me and showed me a, a black and white photo of Elvis. It was a publicity photo. And then on the back, when he turned it over, there was a couple signatures. Elvis's signature was on there, Scotty Moore's signature, and another person whose name I don't recognize. I looked at this picture and I saw it and thought, wow, that's exactly the same picture I had that I had gotten from this woman. I was confident, even though the woman had no proof, was, you know, she sounded like an elderly lady and she had a southern accent. And she seemed very, very sincere. And when I saw the autograph, it was kind of sloppy. And I guess, you know, if you want to be a perfectionist, if you go by the standards of the signatures on Elvis's bonus photos and some of his uh, albums and stuff, the trademark signature, you would, you would almost say, well, that's not his signature because it doesn't match. Although I think the trademark signature was taken from a, a, one of the more serious signatures that Elvis gave, like when he signed documents and uh, maybe some checks or whatever. But I think the more, the more serious or the more important the thing was that he was signing, he was more careful with the signature. But this was a very sloppy signature. I didn't care because it, it just looked real to me. Uh, it, it seemed to make sense. It was in a pen. So um, that was the first uh, autograph signature I had. The next one was a 45 picture sleeve of All Shook Up. Now, this was a, a 45 that I got in the 80s, late 80s. And uh, a guy by the name of Bill Cherry, and many of you may know Bill Cherry because he's a very well-known Elvis uh, impersonator or tribute artist. But anyway, Bill Cherry was a, a dealer in a show that I did a long, long time ago. And he had come up to me and said, across the street from Graceland, there was this older woman and she was trying to sell this to somebody at Graceland. They turned her down at the shops. He said, would you be interested in it? And I said, well, let me see it. And he showed it to me and the signature was on there and it was signed in pencil. I looked at it and I thought, well, first of all, I knew Bill and he, he was really honest about it and everything. And, you know, why would he lie? So... He, he told me what he paid for it. I gave him more money for it than he paid, of course, and uh, I ended up selling it. Another one I had was an import EP that I had gotten from a, a, a collector by the name of John Herman. John Herman um, was a guy who worked security for Elvis whenever he, he was in concert in, in uh, on the East Coast. He's probably best known for the recording of the famous New Year's Eve show that was recorded in Pittsburgh. For some reason, FTD never found a, an actual soundboard, but John had recorded the whole show on cassette. It was made into a bootleg album with pictures, I believe, that John took himself on the cover. And then it was also put out by FTD on a CD. Anyway, I met John at a, a show in, uh, in Pittsburgh at an Elvis fan club many years ago. He showed me several autographs that Elvis had signed. Now, the ones that he had that I really wanted was he had all five Sun Records signed by Elvis. 
He showed them to me. They looked totally legit. And I'm like, how in the world did you get Elvis to sign them? He basically told me that because he was working security and all that kind of stuff, he had access to Elvis and Elvis signed these Sun Records. Now, I didn't get those. He wouldn't let go of those. But he did let go of uh, an EP called See the USA, The Elvis Way, which is a very, very sought after EP within itself. Very rare. And he autographed the front of it. I ended up selling it to a collector uh, named uh, Frank Vacanti. And Frank is a regular watcher of the show. So I, I told him I would mention his name. I'm friends with Frank on, uh, on Facebook. So I Facebooked him and said, hey, Frank, you wouldn't happen to still have that EP, would you? And he said, uh, yeah, I do. I said, well, could you please send me a, a, a scan or a picture of it? And he did. So the picture you're seeing is from Frank Vacanti, and it's the actual item that I sold to him. Uh, the signature is uh, a little awkward uh, because it's kind of squeezed in between uh, images and stuff. But um, uh, John had told me uh, that when Elvis signed it, Elvis was kind of taken back because he had never seen an EP from Australia before. So he was unsure where to sign it. And I guess he, John said that he had, he told him, well, just sign it wherever it's, it's it's brighter or easier to see. He sent me another picture of another autograph that he had, uh, actually two autographs, he said, on the same album. And it was a German album of for LP fans only. So Frankie offered this backstory to that record. I got this from a local friend in California. His dad passed away, who was stationed in Germany at the time as Elvis. My friend Mickey asked me about it, and I told him I was no expert on signatures, but thought his backstory was interesting. They didn't have Sharpies back then, so the pen not working made total sense. And I liked the Army PX stamp on the back. It reminded me of that famous picture of Priscilla with this LP that was in the old magazines. Elvis tried signing the front of the uh, cover, and it didn't take or it didn't look good or whatever. And then he, so he flipped it over and signed uh, the back. He said he wasn't 100% sure about the signatures, but but he he liked the album because of the, the historic connection to that photo. And last but not least, probably the most significant autograph I have ever had is right here. I think I did a show uh, where I featured this, and I think it was one of the early shows, There's Gold in the Mountains. So if you want to know the whole story of how I found it, go to that episode. This is the hotel's copy of the contract that Elvis is seen signing in the photo up here with Alex Shufi, the guy who is was the owner of the International Hotel. And it was a photo uh, op uh, that was organized and specially done where uh, they were building the International Hotel. Elvis went there. Alex Shufi uh, showed up. The two of them got together. Elvis signed his signature on the contract, and then Alex Shufi signed his signature on the contract, and they took pictures of it while he was doing it. This, by the way, is a copy of the contract. I actually sold the contract to a gentleman by the name of Tim Healy. He now owns it, but I made a copy of it just for myself, and I put it in a frame and everything, but what I did was, before I sold it, I was in Indiana. I did a show called the Elvis Fantasy Fest, and I took it with me because I was just so excited and proud when I got it. Ironically, Joe Esposito was at the show. When Joe was free from signing autographs and got away from the table, and, and I knew Joe, he knew me, and I said, Joe, I want you to see something and tell me what you think it is. You know, So he came over to my table and, and took a look at this, this frame, which had at one point had the original contract in it, and he looked at it. And I said, what are, the, what are the odds that this is that contract that Elvis is signing with Alec Shufi in Las Vegas? I said, by any chance were you there? And he said he was. And I said, well, is this the contract? And he said, yeah, that probably is. And I said, well, how can you tell? He says, well, the contract ha doesn't have his salary on it. I said, yeah, so what does that mean? He says, well, that contract was, was a prop. It was kind of like, you know, they took a blank contract, took it up there for the photo op, and Elvis signed it. But there were none of the, none of the things that the deal in, involved, the, his salary or the, the dates he was going to be there, none of that was put on the contract, except for Elvis's signature and Alex Shufi's signature. But like I said, it was done for a photo op. What better 
person to tell you you've got the real McCoy than Joe Esposito, who was there when this photo op thing was shot. You know, he wasn't, he asked me how I got it. I told him the story and he said, well, okay, well, yeah, there's a very good chance that that's, that's the actual contract. This is a William Morris agency contract. And these contracts were so, you know, they had three pages. Uh, they had one page that was given to the artist, one page that was uh, given to the hotel, which would, which Alex Shufi would, would own. And then I think there was a third copy. So this yellow copy here was the, the uh, hotel's copy. And like I said, if you want to find out more about it, just watch that show I, I mentioned. But that, I have to say, was my most prized possession. As I said before, when Elvis signed a serious document, he took his time and he made sure that signature was nice and clear. So the signature on this has got to be the closest to an, a perfect Elvis signature because he took his time to sign it for the photo op. So I use it a lot to compare it to other signatures. In 1961, Elvis did a charity concert in Memphis, and Boots Randolph was there, and some other acts were there, and Al DeVorn organized the event, just like he organized the Hawaii show for the USS Arizona. As an act of appreciation, the colonel made up these official certificates and appreciation for his contribution to that show, and this is it. So this is the certificate here. And it, it, it says at the top, in grateful appreciation to the Colonel Al, or Colonel Al DeVorn. Some kind of fun joke between them where the Colonel called Al Colonel. It says, for services rendered far in excess of expectations in behalf of the needy, this service in conjunction with the Memphis Charity Show, Presley 100% benefit contributed greatly to the success of same, for which we give our sincere thanks. And then it's signed... Elvis Presley, and then below it uh, is a printing of uh, and the Colonel. The first reaction you might have is, okay, well the the, uh, the Elvis signature is is printed like it's printed part of it. Well, it's not. It's uh, signed in a pen, and you can and there's no way you could tell. But if you looked at the other side of it, you can actually see the indentation of the signature of, of the pen as it was pressed into the paper. Of course. Anybody could say anything they want, right? They could say, well, you know, Elvis's secretary or the colonel's secretary signed it or you know, somebody signed it and it's not Elvis. Well, you can say what you want, but I truly honestly believe this was something very important to the colonel and Elvis. Elvis would not have somebody else sign his name. He, he probably took the time and signed it. It's not your typical signature. This signature does not match the one on the International Hotel contract, but it still has the basic things like the loop and the P and the E and, and, and certain things where Elvis may have just signed it because there were actually more than one of these. I was looking through a book at a record show not too long ago and I opened it up and I found this exact certificate made out to another person. And, um, and it was in the, the section of the book that was talking about the 61 Memphis charity concert. It's the exact same certificate except it's made out to somebody else so there were other people that they they gave this to and that's that one was also signed in blue ink uh by elvis presley and everything else was you know pretty much the same as this one so i thought this historically is a, a really great piece i i i, I kind of put this up there with the contract as far as importance because it, it's, it's historical it's about a historical event the, the Memphis Charity Show. This was a certificate from Elvis Presley and the Colonel showing their appreciation, and Elvis signed it in blue ink right there. Pretty cool. Again, this is mostly just my opinion based on my experience. There, there's a distinctive difference between the 50s signatures, the 60s, and the 70s. Now, one thing that was common with all three was that when Elvis was in a hurry, the signatures were sloppy. Which is why in, in the 50s, uh, a couple of his things look real sloppy on the back of a picture, on a pop, you know, back of a, or on a picture sleeve or an EP or whatever. But when he had time to focus, the signatures were all pretty much the same as the trademark signature that you see, or close to it. But Elvis did sign things differently in each decade. And I think in the 60s, because things were less hectic, because he wasn't touring, like when he was signing autographs on the set, for his movies, 
I think he was able to take his time and, and the signatures look better. So I, in, in my opinion, the 60s autographs that I've seen are structured better and look more like the trademark signature than the ones from the 50s that, that all look kind of hurried and a little sloppy because, you know, Elvis was young and he was in, you know, he had just got done performing and he was in a hurry. So the signatures sometimes were very sloppy, but they did have three distinctive things. And that would be the E, the P and the Y. Even if they're sloppy, those three things seem to stand out the same in all three decades. The 70s, he went back to touring. So I think the signatures got a little sloppy, especially if they were, uh, you know, written on a napkin, uh, a menu or this or that, because it, they were done in a hurry. So I think there are definite distinctions between the three decades of, of signatures. How do you even begin to determine if a signature you bought is real or if it's fake? So I've got a couple of things here from the internet I wanted to read to you. If you find a signature that was signed with a Sharpie, in 1979, a new style was introduced in four colors. In 1989, the Sharpie Ultra Fine Point was introduced. Now, the difference is the fine point is the little skinny point one that's more like a pen, and the other one is basically like a magic marker, except it comes to a point. Elvis could never have signed anything with a Sharpie because he died in 77. So if you got one of those, big, big, big red flag. So when it comes to determining whether or not a, a signature is real or fake, according to the Internet, it says, it could be said that you can't, not 100%. Usually, if it looks real, it comes down to the trust placed in the person who it was signed for and an authentication letter from them. Obviously, someone famous and well-connected to Elvis has a much higher probability of truth, therefore making it the genuine article. When people come to me and say, well, you've seen a lot of autographs, but what do you think? Uh, you know, what's your rule of thumb? My rule of thumb is real simple. The number one thing I always look at is what was this signed on? Which is why I bought the ones that I did and sold the ones that I did because it added to their authenticity. The amount of money that they're worth is really truthfully determined by what was signed. Like if you find Elvis's first album, the 1254, the original, and it has Elvis's signature on the front, that should go for 3000 or more, maybe better. If you have a document like I had, which is, uh, you know, historical, that has a signature on it. That goes for thousands. Elvis's signature is so easy to copy. I'm always skeptical about those little pieces of paper that you see at some of these places that sell autographs. I think that it's safer to buy a signature on something that, that you can identify from his career a record or picture or a menu or something from something from his uh, background uh, that kind of connects to him directly just a little piece of paper just doesn't do it for me i mean i don't care how great it looks i i i personally stay away from signatures that are on a piece of paper i recently saw an autograph i think it was online where somebody showed a picture of elvis signing something and then they showed the signature, and the signature was on yellow, uh, a yellow paper, like the yellow pad paper with the lines. And the signature was on the lines. And then I looked at the photo, and the photo is from the 60s or something, and he's signing some kind of autograph book. And I'm thinking, what autograph book has yellow paper with lines on the paper? You know, um, I think it's just a matter of common sense. You just got to put a little bit of common sense to this and say, eh, I don't know. I don't know. Because, again, it comes back to belief and trust. If you don't feel good about it, then you're, you're best just to stay away from it, even if it is real. I'm not saying that these things aren't real. I'm just saying that if you're not comfortable with it, don't buy it. But um, getting back to the values, uh, as I said, historical stuff, big money, uh, things from his career uh, in Vegas or the NBC special or something like that, uh, historical, but just a little piece of paper with his name on it. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not too thrilled about those. I mean, I would stay away from them. I would probably advise somebody else to stay away from them too. Uh, hold on to your money, especially if, if it's a, an expensive item and wait for it to come out. Uh, you find it on something else. 
Another note I found from the internet, look for a reputable autograph authentication service such as PSA and have them examine the signature. They will be able to give you a professional opinion on whether or not the autograph is genuine. It stands for Professional Sports Authenticator and they use a comprehensive system that combines experts, knowledge with sophisticated technology to accurately identify and grade autographs, trading cards, coins, and other sports related items. So these kind of companies, they probably know their stuff. I mean, I, you know, I, I would imagine with technology the way it is and with all the advancements and all these different types of uh, paper and, and printing and all these different things, you should be able to analyze a piece of paper like, and sometimes even know where the paper came from. Sometimes you can almost determine when was this paper made and maybe even look at the ink and say, well, when was this ink made by, you know, using some kind of microscopic, uh, I don't know, sampling or something. I mean, let's face it. If they could determine each person from their DNA, you'd think they could kind of determine if ink is real or when the ink was made or what type of ink it was or, or same thing for the paper. Um, so if there's ever a question about a signature that's not on something and it's just a piece of paper, you know, you might want to try and get it authenticated. But this company, uh, PSA, sounds like a good a good place to go. And I would say, uh, it, it, you know, you, of course you have to pay them, but you may want to do it. It's not a bad way to go. Speaking of authenticating signatures, I want to show you an interesting thing. I'm going to show you a clip from episode four of my show where I talk about uh, something that Sonny West showed me. And here's the clip. One of the great things about Sonny is we were sitting outside uh, the show one day in the lobby, just sitting around casually talking. And uh, uh, I don't know how it came up, but somebody had brought up the topic of Elvis's signature and autograph and uh, whether or not it was authentic or real. And Sonny had this kind of smirk on his face, was kind of laughing. And I said, I said, what? What's so funny? And he goes, he goes, y'all got a piece of paper? I said, sure. So uh, I, I think my wife, Carol, she, uh, I think he went and gra grabbed a piece of paper out of the show, brought it out with a pen. And uh, Sonny wrote this. As a matter of fact, this is the actual piece of paper. And I, I don't know how well we're going to see it. There we go. Okay. This is the actual piece of paper that Sonny West signed with a, with a pen. And when he signed it, he handed it back to me, and I noticed it's Elvis's signature. As a matter of fact, it's Elvis's signature along with Sincerely Elvis or Thanks Elvis. And I looked at him, I said, so what are you saying? And he says, well, you know, when Elvis was performing in Vegas, I mean, people were sending stuff up to the room all the time to get things autographed and Elvis was tired. I mean, half the time he'd go to bed or he'd be zonked out or something and he just didn't want to bother with it. He says, so we signed them. There were many times when Elvis's entourage or people behind the scenes signed for Elvis because he couldn't. So there's that possibility. I do not consider myself an official autograph authenticator or expert. However, after all my years of experience in dealing with Elvis memorabilia, I do believe I can give a qualified guess on the likelihood of whether or not an Elvis autograph is real. And I say that proudly because, you know, when you do it for so long and you've seen so many autographs, and I've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of autographs over the past 35, 35 40 years, you get to know. You can tell the fakes. You, you, somebody brings you a fake, you can see it. Somebody brings you something that's eh, closer to something that you know is real, like the signature on this contract or some of the signatures I've seen that I know are genuinely 100% real. You, you, know, you find a way where you can, you can give an educated guess. So I'm not an expert. I'm not an official authenticator, but I can give you an educated guess on whether or not I think it's real or not from my experience. But that's the bottom line. If you're new to collecting and you don't have somebody that is experienced and you're just going by what somebody's telling you, always remember the source, consider who you're talking to. It's a matter of trust. And if you trust the source, then it's up to you. You're the one spending the money. You're the one who has to buy it. But I still say with a picture and a video of some kind, that's the best way. I just wanted to be clear that the show is about collecting. 
That's what the show is about. It's not about music appreciation, although I do express that every once in a while because I'm an Elvis fan first. So you're going to get my opinion about things, and that's basically it. And I want to thank all of you for continuing to watch the show. I really, really do appreciate all the, the subscribers and the viewers, whether or not I sound snarky or not. <laughs> snarky. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Somebody said I sounded snarky in a comment. I can't get it out of my mind. I think I'm going to get a little thing on my on my license plate now that says snarky. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, I love you guys. Thank you very much for watching the show. It's been great having you here, and I'm out of here. <laughs>